from Georgian winemaking to energetic nuns at incredible landmarks and unbelievable restaurant views. Here are my top three places to visit in Signachi. Okay, so one thing I really wanted to do here in Georgia is check out a vineyard. Georgia is very famous for its wine production, but embarrassingly, I've never tried it. So I have chosen to come to Cradle of Wine, which is a small vineyard in Signachi. Um, and actually it's run by an American guy called Paul, who has Georgian roots. Um, and he was very, very keen in 2010 to set up a vineyard here and honour the Georgian wine producing traditions. Um, he's not here right now, he's in Tbilisi, but he's arranged for me to come and meet Attila, um, who is going to chat me through the process. Attila, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Now, before we get into the wine, I have to share the location. If you come and visit Cradle of Wine, this is what will greet you. It's a summer now, so there's a haze. Um, we can see, obviously, the beautiful Signachi uh, city. If you come here when it's cooler, you'll see beyond, and you'll see the mountains in the distance, the Caucasian mountains, uh, and they're snow-capped. Can you imagine how extra, extra beautiful that view must be? It was time to find out about Georgian wine, and I tell you something, it's unique. Is this where the magic happens? Yes. Yeah? Uh, this is a coevery. So this is what differentiates European winemaking with the barrels to Georgian. Yes. Okay, so some fast facts. Traditional Georgian wine is basically processed a little differently. The grapes come from these gorgeous vineyards and once picked, they are then transferred to a toboggan. Uh, no, uh, I mean a satsakeli. My kids will now demonstrate. You squeeze the juice out with your feet, it drains out here, and is collected round here. It then goes into a quevery, which is an earthenware pot. They are then stored in the ground, which gives the wine a uniqueness you'll not find anywhere else. The wine ferments away for a period of time and voila. Oh, and to show you just how massive some of the pots are, I roped a tealer in. So, Are you able to get in one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you show me? Right now? Yeah, just to see how, just to show the scale of how big this is. Oh my goodness, there he goes. Oh! So it's like this one. Oh my goodness. Wow, it's like whack a mole, isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness, look, it's huge. If you went in there, I think you'd disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's time for a little bit of wine tasting. I was about to try two of Cradle of Wines. Catsatelli wines. Really? Yeah. You drink from here? Yes, absolutely. I don't know. How do we? How do, how do we? How do we stick our little finger uh, out as well? Someone use it like this. Someone <laughs> like with this. Fingers. Yes. Speaking, so it's uh, up to you. <laughs> nice. First up, I was going to try the 2022 Kashmir Catsatelli, grown close to Tbilisi. That, to me, tastes light and dry, uh, easy drinking. Next up, it was Alex's Katsitelli, grown down the road. And I tried it in a glass, so that I could see the colour. Oh, they're both lovely. So dry, huh? Yeah, dry and, and fresh. Mm. Still lovely. It's more kind aromatic. of like a, yeah, more aromatic. It's like a richer wine. But for, for me, on a hot summer's day, the first one, <sighs> wonderful. And to finish off, we tasted some sunflower oil, bread, and shaguni cheese. The sunflower oil is made locally? Yeah. And cold pressed. Ah. Mmm. That's lovely. Yeah. And here we go with the cheese. Mmm. Mmm, it's not too strong, which is just how I like it. It's kind of like got a hint of creaminess. It's a little bit salty. Very easy to eat. Well, now I'm going to wash it down with the wine. Mm. That is lovely. Okay. I don't think you need any more in life, do you? Well, that certainly set me up for the rest of the day. And now it was time to visit a famous landmark 
somewhere known for its peace and tranquility. One of the sights to see if you're in Signaki is the Bodhi Monastery. Uh, it's meant to be very beautiful and have lovely views. So just before the sun sets, here we are. I was really up for a relaxing monastery visit, somewhere to reflect in the surrounding quiet, or not. I think the nuns, the nuns on like overdrive. She's on overdrive. She's cleaning the entire forest. Wanted the peace and tranquility, Isaac. There is see. She's gone mad. There is a boy. She, it's like she's on Red Bull. <laughs> none, a nun on Red Bull. Ooh. Well, here was me expecting the most serene experience. And it didn't stop there. Oh my God. That is so... I had to put some headphones on. I tell you what, this place is... Oh, wow. This place is gorgeous. Bodby Monastery is two kilometres from Signaki, and it's a Georgian Orthodox monastic complex. Originally built in the 9th century, with major updates in the 17th century, it oozes both history and charm. It's now a nunnery and major pilgrimage site, and overlooks the stunning Alazani Valley and on to the majestic Caucasus Mountains in the distance. Get ready. I'm going to bring you back to reality in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Is it a joke? I mean, I've got nothing against screaming kids. I've had twins. I know what it's like. But you know what? It doesn't stop me. Somehow, some small part of me thinking, please stop screaming. <gasps> oh, peace and quiet. Finally, I've just come round the never eat shredded wheat, I don't know, the western flank of the monastery. Oh, it's lovely. Stop flipping, stop flip flopping. Oh my god. I am, of course, only joking. The fact that they are working so hard to look after such a beautiful place is great. Uh, it, it maintains it, it keeps it, you know looking superb and uh, it's a real pleasure to visit. Just bring earplugs. As the sun set, it was time to go to a rather special restaurant. We have just come to a restaurant uh, in Signaki called Amo. It's been recommended and I actually cannot believe the view. And look what they're doing now as well. There's the view. And we are getting, look, the roof taken away. But look at the view! That's amazing. That's amazing, isn't it? <sighs> oh, I don't know what we're saying. I mean, I can't, I, I just it. can't make a decision. That is something yeah, else, it. isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Ah. Uh, so, do we go here? Thank you, sir. So I'm gonna try something new here. I'm gonna try the trout in pomegranate sauce. Um, we've also got some eggplant and walnut because I know walnut is a big deal here. We've got uh, pork barbecue, and then the kids have gone really Georgian. Georgian all the way. And we have a pepperoni pizza and a margarita pizza with chips on the side. I'm gonna wash it down with some Saparavi wine, which is the dry red of the area. Um, and apparently it goes really well with the trout. So I would have always gone for white, but I'm up for a change. So, leaning in because the eggplant with walnut paste has arrived, as has the saparavi. Smells good. Mm. Oh, that is a lovely saparavi. That's really smooth and really dry. It's funny because I yeah, tried yeah. I tried a saparavi in um, in the heart of the city here, and I didn't like it. Um, but these guys seem to know exactly what they're doing, and uh, they said definitely try it again. And this is wonderful. Mm. 
So come to ammo for good wine. Eggplant and walnuts. What a combo. Mmm, that's an unusual mix. Very tasty. The paste. Oh, the walnut comes through later. It's sort of on the 101 bus. Takes a little bit of time to reach the taste buds. But once it arrives, it's quite satisfying. As long as you've got a front window seat. Mmm. I might make my children try it because they haven't had any vegetables. Let's just see how this goes down. Just give it a whirl. It? It's aubergine, um, aubergine with a walnut paste and the walnut taste comes out. It's a bit like hummus. Is that it nice? is a bit like hummus. You're right. A walnut version. Walnut yeah. Tea, yeah. And um, are you going to try it? Pizza is key. I've got my pomegranate fish, my pomegranate trout. Uh, I can't imagine. This sauce looks really rich. Okay. And you know what? I'm just gonna dip it in the sauce. Yeah, gotta take the bones out. There we go. Okay, right, gonna dip it in the sauce, pomegranate sauce. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's delicious. That is, that pomegranate sauce is amazing. It's a bit like um, the equivalent of, you know, duck and plum sauce. It's the kind of pomegranate equivalent, but it's it's rich and it's quite thick. That's a combo I've never had before. Delicious. Jake's quite hungry. I don't know what these are used for. You're shoveling. What is it? Uh -huh. It's the knife and fork. Well, you, you can use the knife and fork provided, or alternatively, you can use the shovel and shove and shove it in there are so many places in signaki that you can eat all with amazing views um i have to say that if you want the view that is the best of the best of the best you need to come here to ammo lovely food but that that wins the day so guys i know we got a taxi here uh but we're gonna walk back do you know the way what we're walking. Where are we going? Ford. We've already gone wrong. Mr. Turning. Okay. You sure? Well, I don't remember down. driving up this road. He made us walk about Five 200 meters. meters. What, what do we say about Dad's orienteering skills? So bad. Put your foot on.